Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video, short one here today. We've got Dr. Terry Simpson. I was sent this screen recording by a friend of mine, I was told to critique him, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's see what he has to say. I've watched the video before since it's so short, but I don't remember every single thing he says, so let's go ahead and listen. If you're in this space, you're almost definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water, so I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below. Okay. Cholesterol is something that lays down atherosclerosis over time. Yeah, does it lay down the atherosclerosis over time? Does it? I know what you're trying to say. You're saying it leads to atherosclerosis over time. No, false. Absolutely erroneous assumption there. Erroneous suggestion. False. One should refer to the largest associative data set ever collected and aggregated by the World Health Organization and the British Heart Foundation working independently from each other, in fact, not working together, in which they measured the total cholesterol levels and LDL levels for people in 168 different countries. These are several hundred million data points around the world. On the other axis, they listed the age-adjusted death rates and plotted them per 100,000 persons per year versus their cholesterol level. And what they found is that the lower your cholesterol cholesterol level was below 220 milligrams per deciliter, the higher the incidence of deaths were from all causes, including every sub-cause as well, most notably heart disease, cancer, and strokes. Now, one should also understand that association does not equal causation. However, if there is an absent association or an inverse association between a previously posited suggestion or hypothesis, then causality can be dismissed. In fact, atherosclerosis only occurs in the high-pressure areas of the vascular system, also known as the blood vessels, and never occurs in veins, unless the vein is actually introduced into a high-pressure area of the vascular system via a bypass situation. If the same blood is being pumped through the veins and the blood vessels, then why does atherosclerosis not occur in veins, Dr. Terry Simpson? Atherosclerotic plaque consists of one-tenth of one percent cholesterol. That is it, on average. Not to mention the fact that also, cholesterol is very beneficial for the human body, making up the backbone of five major hormone groups, including progestogens, androgens, glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and estrogens. It makes up the myelin sheathing on your neurons. It's important in vitamin D synthesis and utilization within the body, for example, as well. Any excess cholesterol that one consumes that the body cannot use at that given instance in time is simply excreted or recycled as is indicated at that instance in time. Dr. Terry Simpson. Heart disease is an inflammatory condition characterized by hyperglycemia or high blood sugar and the subsequent oxidation and glycation of LDL and other SDLDL particles, which are small dense versions of LDL particles that are metabolites of fructose and ethanol. Ethanol being drinking alcohol. If you didn't know, fructose and ethanol are metabolized the same way and have therefore the same metabolites. What happens is the glucose molecules involved in the heart disease process bind to the ApoB containing lipoproteins, those being particularly the LDL lipoproteins, as every lipoprotein has a tag, either ApoA or ApoB. And what happens is it blocks out that receptor, disallowing the liver to take them up. Once that receptor is blocked out, the human body recognizes it as foreign, even though it's not necessarily a foreign protein. It now is because of the glucose binding and, for all intents and purposes, rendering the cell unrecognizable. As a subsequent effect of that, the human body has macrophages, which are a type of white blood cell, that sequester those deranged proteins via their scavenger receptors on said macrophages. And then what happens is they continue to engulf them because they have an unlimited capacity to do so, and then they deposit them into injured arterial walls or the areas of the arterial walls that are injured, therefore also indicating that you need damage to your arterial walls first before this cholesterol can actually be deposited. Guess what? 
If you don't have damage to your arterial walls, it will not be deposited into those areas of the blood vessels. Not to mention once again, to iterate the fact that one tenth of 1% of atherosclerotic plaque consists of cholesterol, and it's largely composed of scar tissue that can become calcified at later stages and then cause thrombi, which are blood clots. So, Dr. Simpson, this is false. It doesn't make sense even on a common sense basis because of the fact that Americans' red meat consumption, for example, which arguably is the main derivative in Americans' diets of cholesterol, has decreased, actually actually, markedly. It decreased in three years by over 18% from the years of 1977 to 1980, actually, and then has been steadily declining ever since. And also, Americans' high LDL diagnoses has gone down by over 50%, or did go down by over 50% from the years of 1977 to 2010. So how does this make any sense, Dr. Simpson? You are incorrect, and also arrogant. I've seen your other clips, and you need to be humbled. And... There's nothing to being on cholesterol medicines. You take it. The vast majority of people tolerate it well. There's False. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet, as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and, subsequently, any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. One in five statin users cannot engage in taking statins. They cannot withstand the symptoms and the side effects, which is a astonishing considering that they would be willing to withstand the side effects more often and to a greater degree if they thought it would let them live longer. So side effects that are disallowing statin users to actually engage in the consumption, let's say, or the administration of statins indicates that those symptoms are quite strenuous and severe, which then raises the query, how much longer do people on statin medications actually live? Well, this was actually derived, this conclusion was derived from all of the available studies at the moment, all 11 that there are, which consisted of 90,000 people, information from 90,000 people, 90,000 patients, which showed that if one had a previous history of heart disease, they gained a median of 4.1 days of life, and people that had no history of heart disease and had no heart attacks previously gained a median of 3.2 days. So is that really worth it? No, it's not. So in fact, actually, statins are mitochondrial poisons, Dr. Simpson. They downregulate markedly the production of your CoQ enzymes within the mitochondria, which is a vital part of your electron transport chain. The electron transport chain falls apart, the mitochondrion falls apart. And then what happens is the entire cell disintegrates. If you are taking a statin, it is advised by actual competent influencers and health professionals, let's say, and experts, that you take CoQ10 alongside it. The first suggestion, though, is to not take them at all, though. That is the first suggestion. Do not take them. So, false, Dr. Simpson. There is something to taking these medications, you buffoon. Okay, anyway, um... That was ridiculous, wasn't it? Dr. Terry Simpson, I've seen other clips of him. He is very very arrogant. And I want to clarify something. If you think that I am arrogant, I want to clarify what arrogant means. Arrogant means exhibiting a higher level of confidence that is not commensurate, disproportional to the amount of competence one actually possesses within the topic of discussion that is being espoused by that person that is being accused of being arrogant. That is not me. That is Dr. Simpson, who believes himself remotely competent to speak upon anything regarding cholesterol and heart disease as a physician. Let me tell you something, Dr. Simpson. I want to humiliate you here, to use the archaic definition of the word humiliate, to humble. I want, I want to go ahead and do that here. You are a physician. Physicians are trained in two things primarily, pharmacology and symptomology. Basically, you are trained to say, oh, person A, patient A, exhibits this symptom and this symptom and this symptom. Prescribe this, this, and this. It's primarily pharmacology and symptomology. Patient presents with this, prescribe this. So let me just remind you of that. I would suggest doing your studying on your own time with biochemistry and information of veracity. So anyway, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video whenever we react to maybe Dr. Simpson again, maybe Dr. Paul Saladino. I have a few videos up right now. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts below. And if you didn't know, I have a book coming out.
called Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. I think I got that right. It's coming out very soon. It will be out this year. Please buy that because then you'll have all the knowledge in your head, which is the entire point of this channel in the first place, is to teach people, not in a didactic way, but in an actual charitable way. So, subscribe to the Patreon as well for extended cuts of certain videos, and always ad-free and with pop-ups on the screen, because on YouTube they're blurred. With that being said, I will see you in the next one.